Dr. Pozo, this is where I come to you. I, I, I really want to take a look and see where we are as a continent. Have we progressed in leadership? Have we stalled? Or are we moving backwards? Let, let's address where we're at in terms of leadership on the continent. Let me put it in this context. It's 65 years. It's 65 years since uh, Africa has began to gain independence. This is 1957 when Kwame Nkrumah led Ghana into freedom. But if you look at him up to Mandela later, Sankara, who fought Bonnier and everybody, they had a set of circumstances which faced them. And they had a vision about the continent. That's why I talk about vision. It was to decolonize the continent. Those are their set of circumstances. What Africa is facing today is leaders with no visions. Yeah. They have no visions. What do they want to do about this continent now? What do they want to do about our economies? President Mugabe was telling me about a Chinese company which took a, cr a chrome asset and devalued it after 10 years to lower values. Is that what we're all about? It's theft at the state level. We're selling our wealth to those who used to steal it. Now, we're just, we're just giving it away like that. Yeah. They don't have to steal it anymore. We are giving it to them. We don't beneficiate our minerals, right? We don't grow our economies. We steal like hell from the taxpayer. African countries have been riddled with corruption. Ghana itself. That's why that guy who became president and then took the politicians and shot them in the river. He was fed up with corruption. Our own country is throttled by corruption. It's, South Africa is throttled by corruption. Yeah. There's always been at the municipal level unaccountable billions of rent. We must start here at home. We are not accountable. We've got a bunch of thieves ruling us. Strong words. <laughs> Strong words. And the problem is we, we see the, the thievery around us. I mean, I was in the, in the previous panel discussion, I was talking to going to Mtata yesterday and having a look at the state of where Madiba was born, the, the roads, the school, the infrastructure, the water supply, sewage in the road, unemployment, potholes everywhere. Um, you know, these are the kind of things, and the list goes on and on and on. These are the kind of things you would have hoped would have gotten better in all this time under the leadership that we have now, but instead it's gotten worse. You know, Leona, they say, in many areas in South Africa today, listen to this very carefully. If you drive your car straight, it's because you are drunk. If you zigzag, it's because you are, you are not sober. I know, I know. Yeah, because you, you must negotiate the top potholes. If you drive straight, you are drunk. You, you have to zigzag. Then you are sober. Yeah. Yeah, but what are we doing? What are we doing with, to our people with the money that's allocated to municipalities? We should be building roads, right? Houses, making sure there's clean water, not, not one we see at Amman's No. Clean water. Making sure that the schools are okay, the hospitals are okay. We're not doing that. But we're not saying there's no money. We're saying there's, over, there's uh, unaccountable expenditure. Seriously? Where did it go? Did the money fizzle in the air? I mean, how can money fizzle in the air? It went to the pocket of those who are saying we're elected. And we must pick take here and not mess one another. Yeah, yeah. You know. and, and, and it is important, Cass. And let's, let's bring you into this. I mean, uh, these, are, these are harsh truths and harsh realities that we live with every single day. From the business side of things, I mean, just look at it. Where, where, where do you sort of stand on this? Uh, firstly, on, on African leadership and accountability, I think we need to stop. I mean, whenever I talk to people, or well, so some people, we go back to being colonized, we go back to the history and so on. And, and I, that's important. That's important for context. It's not important to use as an excuse anymore. Okay? That's the first point. Accountability is obviously a critical element. But we also need to be clearer about how we, as, as a continent, position ourselves on the world stage. 
We need to understand what our strengths are, our weaknesses are, how we can leverage of our strengths, how we can manage our weaknesses, and not be sort of starry-eyed about the role we can play because we are this continent supposedly with all the opportunities and what we can offer the world. So I think we need to have a discussion about that. Also, let's look at the structures on the continent. I mean, the AU has been totally unsuccessful in addressing the conduct of leadership and holding leaders to account. And I think that one of the reasons for that is that there's a strong, ongoing strong man syndrome. If you look at the leadership in, in, on the continent, where are the young leaders? It's the old people who have been there for generations, who, as Matthew says, have become corrupt, have become unaccountable, have destroyed structures for accountability in the country, as we saw during the previous administration here. So we've, we've got to recognize that's where we are, and we've got to start breaking the strongman syndrome. We need to start promoting younger leadership, and, and we need to ensure that there's consequence management for actions. And, and, and with all due respect, the current leadership on the continent and the structures that are supposed to be doing that for the continent are just failing us miserably in that, and, and we need to hold them to account in some way. Do you want me to come to South Africa? Uh, please. <laughs> Let's go. Bring okay. it on. Go for okay. it. Okay. Uh, okay. So in, in South Africa, I mean, I'm not going to go through the crises we have. We all know the crises we have. Matthew's talked about some of it. Uh, the, and, and let's first say that the current administration under President Ramaphosa has gone some way in trying to rebuild institutions to try and the Zondo Commission and so on. But uh, Justice Zondo himself has publicly said that things have gotten worse since the Commission report, right? And, and I've been in discussions on this at various forums, and my question is why are we surprised? If action was taken, the day after the president got the Zondo report, we might have made progress. Yeah. If you take, get the report and then you do virtually nothing, all you're doing is you're allowing those who have been guilty of malfeasance or who have been allegedly responsible for malfeasance, it's just allowed them time to actually consolidate, to strengthen their networks, and to carry on, essentially. Uh, so, so all the work that the Zondo Commission has done, if we don't actually take it seriously from the point of view of addressing some of those recommendations, or at the very least de debating them, we, we shouldn't be surprised that things, that things have gotten worse. We, we need to address unethical conduct across society. The problem here is that society has lost a moral compass in South Africa. It's not just government. Government, obviously a critical player. But we need, to understand, we need to address unethical practice in some parts of business and in broader civil society. The union movement isn't free of this. The religious community isn't free of this. It's, it's, we've lost our moral compass, and we need to, to, to understand that. Also, we, not, you know, we need to move away from this thing that we often have debates whether business wants to have a strong government or not. Of course we need a strong government, but we need a government that understands its role in the current context. And the bottom line, we have a weak government that's ideologically inclined, that doesn't understand the current situation we are in and doesn't understand the context, the global context in which, in which we work. And, and, and we've, got to, we've got to get them to understand that. Yeah. So, so government needs to lead impartially. We need to begin to ask ourselves some hard questions. Is the alliance between the majority party and the union movement and others still relevant? What does it do to the ability of government to actually work impartially? Uh, we need to ask those questions in today's times. And what does it do to accountability? I mean. Uh, if you wearing different hats when you're sitting in parliament, what does that do? Who are you accountable to? Okay, so those are, I think, some of the issues. Then, speaking from a business point of view, and let me be, do this carefully. We absolutely convinced 
that if there isn't a real partnership between government and business to address the crises in this country, and the crises in this country, and we can have all sorts of ideological debates about this, but the crises in this country cannot be addressed without investment and growth, yeah. and how we use that growth to actually make sure it's inclusive, and how we build inclusive growth. Whether we like it or not, the way things have unfolded, the capacity and resources fit in business. And business could say, well, it's not our problem. Everything that Matthew talked about, roads and all of that, is education. Government should be doing that. But what's happening at the moment? Business has said, we've had a debate. Do we go to the president and tell the president, Mr. President, that's it, we've had enough. We are not working with you because we are making no progress. We see no real partnership from government, and, and we're just pulling back. Business is going on strike. Okay? What are the consequences of that? They're severe, and they're horrendous. So we've taken the view, Mr. President, these are the three things that are important to this country. We will work with you on those three things. Not a negotiation. We will work with you on those three things, but work with us in partnership. Okay, and we've, we've mobilized resources, we've mobilized capacity, and we're hoping that government actually comes with their people now to actually make this happen. So, so I think that, that we need to be more robust in holding them to account. We need to be more robust in, in talking about what direction we need to go to. We are a little economy on the southern side of the globe. We must stop thinking that we can change the world economic form. We can't. We need to see how we work within that and leverage of that and, and, and structure it to benefit us and how we address the crisis we have. So it's those sorts of discussions that need to be had. Certainly business is involved in those discussions and we're not saying partner with business to the exclusion of others. Government must talk to whoever they want to talk to. But by God, don't quite get into interminable wheel spinning consultation, and take no decision. Yeah. Talk to us, talk to labor, talk to whoever you want. If you want to bring us together on a particular issue, bring us together. If we agree, that's great. If we don't agree, take decisions and give some direction. And until we get to that sort of a stage, we're not going to progress. Just feels like we've and been... decisions mean holding accountability. Absolutely. And, yeah. But it feels like we've been speaking about this for so long, since I can remember. We've been having the same conversation. We thought, not governed by, slice, by, by salami tactics, commission, committee, <laughs> that. Inquiry. You're, some, you, you're cutting slices of authority. Take decisions, cut the bullet. That's what you should do. And this, put the fear of hell in the thieves. That's what the president should do. I, I like him, you know, when he was wrong, not wrong, I defended him. Publicly in front of all of you. And some of my colleagues said, why did you defend him? I said, because there was nothing wrong. But he must take decisions. Yeah. And it starts with him to destroy the rot. Don't have questionable things around you. Because people will say, but what, what about you? Yeah. You can't lead them. If you have for a few dollars in your mattress, I'll say, what about you? <laughs> you got Let's not be afraid to tell the truth. Because that's where we miss it. Relata. We have to tell the truth. And then that way we'll fix the problems. I'm sorry, Mandela is innocent. Yeah. Mandela is my hero. Absolutely. <laughs> he is all of our heroes. And the problem is, is that you know, we're looking to train the future leaders, but we're looking back at the past leaders like a Mandela, which we just, we're missing so desperately. Um, 